I have a dirty little secret I need to get off my chest. I shoot Canon mirrorless cameras and I don't own a single RF mirrorless lens. I don't know any. So uh, I'm gonna tell you what I do shoot on today. It's Jeff Dobson with J. Richard Photography. Today we are talking about my lineup of lenses that I take to every single wedding I shoot. So one of the main questions you get as a wedding photographer is, you know, gear related. What do you shoot on? What do you recommend? What's the best lens? What's the best camera? I don't know that there's a right answer. Um, every, it seems like every single manufacturer out there now is great. Um, I started out on uh, Canon, and that's what I've stuck with this whole time, um, and I love it. Started out on the T3i and graduated through. The 6D was my first uh, full-frame camera, and then the 6D Mark II, and then the R came out, so I went with the R um, and have stayed with the mirrorless line now shooting on the R6. But, you know, um, investing in gear can get so expensive, um, especially if it's, you know, a side hustle where you're not, you know, making a hundred grand, you're not making six figures a year yet, or if you're just starting out and don't have the money to invest in it. I get it. Um, RF lenses, especially some of the good stuff is thousands of dollars and not everyone has that um, to invest in it or maybe you don't want to. Um, honestly, I think a lot of that comes down, you know, to just wanting to show that you have it for some people. Um, I think and I do produce great quality images, you know, with the 51.4, you know, um, with the Tamron 35.18, you know, and it is work that gets me booked and, and it does well. So this is my setup um, for every wedding. Um, the two main lenses that stay on my camera are the Canon 85 1.8, not an L lens, anything like that. It's the Canon 85 f1.8. That is my probably my favorite lens in my bag. Lightweight, um, lets me not have to be super uptight to people. I can reach, you know, it's a long lens, so we can get it. It's prime, which is great. So the low um, f stop of 1.8 gives you beautiful bokeh. It's fast, it's sharp, and it adapts with the adapter right to both my mirrorless Canon lens cameras by far my favorite lens and it is on my camera 95 percent of the day the tamron 35 tamron 35 1.8 vc so it's got the you know their image stabilization lives on my other camera body it is my go-to for the micro shots because you can get incredibly close up with this lens and you can also use it more as you know, it's also my wider lens when, when it lends to that on the day. So those two live on my body, not on my camera bodies, 90, again, 99, 95% of the day. I bring a 50 F 1.4 with me. Um, you know, 50 mil is a fun, you know, the kind of traditional standard focal length. The 1.4 can give you super blurry backgrounds. So that one comes with me. Doesn't get used a lot, but it does come with me. So after that, when we go to the ceremony and for the portraits kind of immediately after the ceremony, I'm on the 70 to 200 F 2.8. This is the um, version three lens. This lens is the most expensive lens I own, but it is worth every single penny um, I spend on it. Um, the only reason why it is not on my camera as much as the 85 is because of the weight. Um, when you're shooting a wedding six, eight, ten hours, this thing becomes an absolute grind. But for the ceremony, it lives on my camera almost every ceremony because at 200, you can really zoom in and get all those cool special moments during the ceremony. Um, and then 70, you can step back out um, and then I will use it um, directly after the ceremony for, um, for the photos of the bride and groom. We take them out just because of how dynamic 
the images come out of this with the compression at 200. I mean, it's just, I can't recommend a 70 to 200 enough. Um, this one is my most expensive lens. Um, and so I know it could be a, a, a reach for people to get this one, especially since it's like not on your camera all, all day. But Tamron makes a great version of this. That's the first 70 to 200 I had was the Tamron version. And man, it, that is a lens that changes the game. Uh, I think that took my, my work to the next level was having that. And then the last lens I take to every wedding is the 16 to 35 F2.8, the Canon lens. Um, I've talked about it in other videos, especially um, if you're shooting at a location that you know, maybe the aisle is short, the walk is short. I like the being able to zoom from 16, zoom out to 16 and have more time to get them coming down the aisle um, and then cropping in um, and post if need be. I, I like the functionality of that. And then it is a 16 is wide, wide. You know, that's that's super, that's way out there. Um, so it, it can be used to show like the grand, um, you know, layout of the venue of the place they're getting married. You know, of course, it does distort on the edges, which can be a problem, but um, it is really great for that. Um, so that is my lineup um, and what I shoot on. Um, I think it's a great little kit. The 50-1.4, uh, you can easily get a 51.8. Um, I've said in previous videos, I think that is like the first lens you should buy outside of your kit. Um, prime lenses, which I spent a lot of time on. Um, I can't recommend enough. I think they make you a better photographer because you have to zoom in and out with your feet. Um, it makes you have to think about the frame more. And I think it teaches you more about photography than a zoom lens. Um, zoom lenses obviously have a very important part in what we do during the day, but the prime, there's just something about those images out of the prime, the shallow depth of field that you get um and how tack sharp they are there's less things to move in there so you get sharper images so anyway that is my lens setup for a wedding day and the reasons why i use them um i think you know if i was just starting out again i think a 50 or a 35 um 50 or a 35 would be a two great ones to start with and then upgrading to an 85 um, as soon as you get a chance and you could absolutely create gorgeous images right out of the gate um, remember if you are shooting crop the 35 is going to be closer to you know if it's one and a half 35 it's gonna be like 52 mil um, so keep that in mind the 85 becomes 100 and whatever 30 whatever um, but yeah, so that is definitely what I recommend as a kit starting out, regardless of brand, regardless of anything. A 35 F1.8, 85 F1.8, a 70 to 200 lens, and then the Canon 16 to 35. That is it. That is what I recommend. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something from this. Um, I would love question of the day today. What is your go-to lens on a wedding day, the one that spends the most time on your camera. Um, I'm Jeff Dobson with J. Richard Photography, and I'll see you in the next one.